Hello, everybody. For those of you that don't know, my name is Roger Leet, inventor of the Katie Did and the Kimberly Wood Stove and owner of Unforgettable Fire, LLC. I'm hanging out again with my friend Shane Clark here from Teg Pro. We're up in Vermont. For those of you that saw our video last October, we were prototyping thermoelectric generation systems, and I'm back here again because a lot of my travels have brought me to speak to people who have various needs that I've been trying to figure out how to fulfill. For example, when I got to Kansas, I met a lot of farmers, and what they wanted was to be able to run hot water through the soil in their greenhouses to keep the roots from freezing during the wintertime so they could grow year-round. Up in the northeastern states, a lot of agricultural folks want to figure out how to get away from gas, oil, and electric sources for drying grain. The wood stove can be used for exactly those purposes. This behind me is to simulate, in fact, that's 300 feet of PEX tubing, which is to simulate the load required to run that uh, hot water through the soils of the greenhouse. And I'm going to have Shane help me explain how all this works. So let's start with the stove itself. Uh, first of all, we're burning, this is soft. Soft maple. Soft maple, it's mid-grade wood. For those of us in Seattle, this would be a hardwood. <laughs> we're burning about six pounds of it an hour, which is a fairly decent rate. And with that, these two thermoelectric generators are heating up all the water running through these tubes, this long length of tubes. So what kind of a temperature are we seeing coming out of those tubes? We're seeing around 110, 120 degrees Fahrenheit right now, uh, but the system's still coming up. We could easily see as much as 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's going into the tube or coming back? That is going into the tubes. Okay. So our return temperature is going to be in the 90 degree range? Yeah, it's dropping anywhere from 10 to uh, 15 degrees Fahrenheit when it's coming back out. Okay, and on the board here, we've got a little digital readout here, and what that's doing is that's showing us the voltage after the pump has done its job, is that correct? This is actually the power consumption that's being utilized by uh, one of the three pumps. Currently we're running a 10 watt pump, which can move about 2.5 gallons per minute. We have a two gallon pump and a pump that's also about three gallons per minute. Okay, so what I'm seeing here though is we've got excess power after the pump, correct? Yes, we do. And we actually have a dynamic load down here that we can actually simulate um, battery charging or something of um, that nature. For example, LED lights or fans that we can, it's, a, it's actually hooked up right now. So we can actually turn this on and we can just see how much power we can generate in excess of what is available from the pump. Okay. So we're actually producing around 8 watts in excess of what the pump can handle right now. Um, when this stove actually gets going, we've actually seen in excess of the pump running as much as 22 to 25 watts. So one of the questions that I think people want to know, for example, is let's say a farmer puts this into his greenhouse. He's got 300 feet of run to keep those plants warm. On top of running the pump, how much power would we have left over, say, charging a battery? Um, I'd say on average probably close to about an amp, uh, but we've seen well over two amps at 12 volts uh, in excess of what would be necessary to run a 10 watt pump. Okay, and when, you, when you've got one of those uh, trickle chargers for a car that you plug into the wall, mm -hmm. what kind of amperage does that put out? Um, yeah, they vary anywhere from, you know, down into 500 MA to 2 amps, some of them go up as high as 6 amps. Uh, you know, trickle charging it even an amp uh, an hour would allow for a lot of excess power for LED lighting, for example, on a battery system. Okay. So another aspect of having this tube full of hot water that can be done is in-floor radiant heating. I've had a lot of people ask me just how much radiant floor heat we can produce with these thermoelectric generators. The plan that I have for my home in the future is to build an insulated slab so that underneath the slab will be a four inch neoprene base. I'll run my rebar put this kind of tubing through it, and then hook that up to the stove so I can heat my floor with it. I'm also considering the idea of a large hot water storage facility system 
which can be augmented from rooftop solar for both power and electric, uh, sorry, power and water generation, giving me two separate sources for hot water and electricity off the grid, even in the worst case scenario. I'd like Shane to explain a little bit more about what's going on back here with these pumps and meters. Take it away, sir. Well, we have three different pumps set up. One pump along the top is actually two gallons per minute flow rate, which is about five watts. The next pump is about two and a half gallons per minute, which uses about 10 watts. And the third pump is about three gallons per minute and uses about 15 watts. So there's just different opportunities. Really unique difference between the two of them is they can actually handle different elevations. For example, we can have an elevation difference of probably around um, four feet with the first one, somewhere around eight feet with the second one, and we can get well over 12, 13 feet with the third one. Just if you have an elevation difference between your floor and your stove, um, you need that extra um, head okay. in some, in some uh, scenarios. Which would also allow, <clears throat> many people have asked me where they should place their wood stove in their home. The upstairs portion of the home is nicely decorated, the downstairs is not. But they know that heat rises. This becomes real easy. Put the wood stove upstairs where you live, run the water down into the basement, utilizing water baseboard heat. Now you've got both floors heated from the one heat source. And or, like I said, you can go through the slab with the, the, uh, what, the X tubing. And we used the tubing just as an example of, of how much length we can actually run through and push through heating wise. You could use baseboard, radiators, um, there's a lot of other different heating mediums for hydronic systems that could be utilized to dissipate the heat. How about heating a hot tub? Sure. There you go. <laughs>